in the uh, previous videos, we already finished our discussion about um, uh, you know two greatest economists and philosophers, Adam Smith and David Ricardo. Okay. Um, here in this video, we're gonna start a new journey with Thomas Malthus. He's also a great economist. Uh, his study focused upon uh, the population. Okay. He published um, his uh, book called The Essay on Principle of uh, Population in late 18th and early 19th century. So um, the timing is very important here because uh, upon that time he did his study. Um, the Industrial Revolution occurred in Great Britain. Okay, keep that in your mind because um, it's super important uh, during our um, exploration here. Okay. And um, so his study uh, focused on the relationship between the population growth and the food supply. Okay. He said that the food supply um, increases arithmetically. Arithmetically means um, it goes from one to two to three, to four, to five, okay? And um, actually, if you recall, uh, law of diminishing returns uh, we discussed in the previous video, um, the actual growth of food supply could be even slower than that. In other words, it should actually go from one to two to 2.5 to 2.75, and so on and so forth. In other words, um, you know, the total food supply would still increase um, when we increase the amount of variable inputs, such as labor. However, the increase in um, total food production is decreasing. In other words, every time when we add one more unit of labor into the food production, uh, we, the increase in the output is less than the last then you know that uh, we got from the last unit of uh, labor okay and um Malthus also pointed out that population grows uh, geometrically uh, that means it goes from 1 to 2 to 4 to 8 to 16 to 32 and so on. Okay. So when we put these two together, we would find that you know uh, sooner or later the population would outpace uh, the food supply. So we're going to end up with famines, you know, starvation, and um, diseases. Um, these problems, right? Now, um, in class work, um, in the um, worksheet number five, uh, the first question, uh, you're supposed to graph these two curves, one for food supply, one for population, okay? And um, there, there's only one thing I want to, um, you know, bring up for your attention. Do you think we could put um, these two, food supply and the population, on the same graph? Or we have to use two separate graphs. Okay, think about that. And um, during our class meeting, we can discuss these. Okay. All right. Um, Malthus, you know, when he um, made an observation about the world population uh, before 18th century, he found that, you know, it was actually pretty stable, okay, compared to, you know, what happened after the Industrial Revolution. And uh, so he wondered, you know, what are the factors which actually keep the population in check, okay, before 18th century. Now, he came up with two types of, two types of checks. The first one is what he called positive or direct checks including malnutrition, civil war, famine, etc. So these things 
could directly reduce a uh, number of people. Okay. Now the second type is um, called the preventative uh, checks, including late marriage, celibacy, etc. Okay. Late marriage means you know getting married at a later uh, age uh, in life, and celibacy means uh, being voluntarily um, abstain abstaining from uh, marriage or sexual relations. Okay, so these ways again indirectly reduce number of people uh, in the world. Okay. Now um, on the top of these things, Malthus also discussed a very interesting thing: um, the apprenticeship system. Okay. Now um, and he he found you know this system matters um, in terms of the population growth before 18th century. Okay, at least in uh, Great Britain. Now here is the short uh, description of what Malthus mentioned uh, in his book about the apprenticeship. He said that uh, at a very young age, apprentice would work for a master craftsman in return for board and room. He would gradually learn the trade, become more productive because of the apprenticeship training, and finally become a master craftsman. In addition, only once he established his own trade would he marry. Okay. Now, several things um, we uh, need to uh, discuss. So here, before Industrial Revolution, um, if people wanted to live in a, a decent life, okay, be, become a, a member of the middle class, um, they have to learn some skills. Okay. Uh, if you make money or make a living with your muscles, you're just going to be the bottom of the society. Okay, so um, that's why you know um, these younger generations could choose to um, you know stay with their master craftsmen uh, for years to learn some skills. Okay, uh, most of them are were learning you know how to make um, like agricultural um, uh, equipments tools. Okay. Now, um, uh, Thomas Malthus then talked about you know the um, Industrial Revolution, which destroyed uh, the apprenticeship system. Okay. Um, so how did this happen? Uh, Malthus said you know because uh, during the Industrial Revolution there are many factories. Opened up in the urban area, so um, these uh, younger generations, including the apprentices, um, they found that you know they did not have to stay with the uh, master craftsman for years um, to make money. Okay, they can actually you know just go to uh, these factories and work work over there, and they sh they could get a decent pay. Okay, now because of that. Fewer people would like to stay, you know, within the apprenticeship system. Okay, now um, apprenticeship system, uh, in terms of um, keeping the population in check, um, it's actually very important because, uh, as we said, you know, you have to spend years and uh, learning uh, the skills from the craftsman, the master craftsman, right? So. Um, these apprentices uh, tend to get married later in their life. Okay, um, then it will reduce the number of generations born uh, within a given amount of time. Now, um, a very uh, quick and numerical uh, example could help us understand. Um, let's do one hundred years. Okay, uh, within one hundred years. Uh, if people um, get married and have their uh, first baby at the age of twenty, okay, let's assume everybody uh, does that, you know, for simplicity, okay. Then for one hundred years, there would be five generations 
uh, born, right? Uh, 100 divided by 20, correct? Uh, however, if, uh, let's see, these apprentices, they actually get married at the age of 25 because they need to, you know, spend five years uh, learning the skills from the master uh, craftsman, okay? Then you would find within 100 years, there would be only four generations born. So 100 divided by 25, right? In other words, there would be one fewer generation born within 100 years. So you could imagine, you know, um, uh, you know how this apprenticeship uh, kind of reduced the population growth in history, okay, before Industrial Revolution. And um, as we said, because of these, uh, because the Industrial Revolution destroyed the system, so Malthus actually uh, projected a population explosion after Industrial Revolution. So he said that, you know, the population would, you know, um, uh, grow pretty quickly, dramatically. Okay. And um, so here, I, I guess we can, you know, um, draw the conclusion about the fourth driving force of development, which would be the reduction in population growth. Uh, this can be done through the birth control and other ways. Okay? Now here it's a little little bit confusing. Okay? So what we mentioned here is the change in population. Okay? How fast the population grow. If we can slow down that pace of population growth, then the economy can grow faster. Each person in this economy can receive a relatively larger slice of the pie, the economic pie. Okay, so that's why we believe the reduction in population growth could be uh, another driving force for economic development. Okay, now um, I would like to raise um, a question at the end of this video for you guys to think about. Uh, if you recall, you know, when we discussed uh, the second driving force of development in the previous videos, we said it was uh, the uh, extension of markets, okay? And we said that, you know, the larger the market, the more likely the labor can be specialized, so they would be more productive, then there would be a higher living standard or the income per person, right? And um, over there, we said that, you know, the, uh, we, we could use the population as a proxy for the, for the market, right? Like the larger the population, the larger the market, okay? So over there, uh, you were probably under the impression that, you know, the larger the population, the more likely uh, the labor can be specialized, so uh, they would end up with a higher income, right? But here, we said that, you know, uh, the population growth should be reduced, should be, um, you know, decreased in some way. Do you find a contradiction between these two? So between the fourth uh, driving force and the, I'm sorry, here is a typo. It should be second driving force we discussed, okay? Again, which is market size or the size of population. Think about this. Okay, do you find any contradiction? Uh, if you do, um, then, um, uh, you know, how could we make sense of that? Okay, and uh, if you don't find a contradiction, in explain why, all right? Now, um, again, we're going to discuss this during our class meeting.